All right, this is going to be, uh, I know it's been a while since I've posted, but uh, right now I need to going to run through installing SyncThing on uh, Mac OS. So here you can see I've got screen capture working. And what I'm going to do is install the bundle. So I've already gone to the site uh, and I'm going to select the bundle. Wow, that scrolls pretty fast. Okay, this is kind of new with my setup. So bear with me and actually hopefully this will do HD whereas before it did, I have no idea what was going on I have a good idea but at least nothing I'm going to admit on camera uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this and it should download should download it's downloading oh no okay let me get here at the DMG and a little thing that's kind of troubling was that I saw here is this sync thing upgrade corrupts application bundle that's hmm, a little troubling but also this high cpu usage so that looks like it's good that they fixed that and uh also just as a in case anybody even gets there where the project is now officially part of sync thing that's pretty cool not to take anything away from the person that was doing it beforehand but uh it's nice that the project takes that into consideration okay so looks like it's done let me move over here and i probably need to replace the batteries on this mouse not to be said for wired keyboard and mice let's see nothing incriminating dmg come on gonna verify for anyone that, did, that actually doesn't know sync thing it's essentially uh, there's a company called BitTorrent sync everyone that knows BitTorrent, so they created a sync product these guys are you know the, this project is an open source open protocol version of that uh, and with all Apple or Mac OS just drag it over and it will start installing and uh, the protocol is available. You can go on and take a look. There's very there's a lot of things you can see. I mean, if you want to study protocols, it's uh, actually pretty interesting. But uh, for those that just want to get this up and running, um, you can go ahead and just do that. So let me start it up. Uh, I'm not going to completely finish this. I'll do that in a different segment. But here is just essentially installing. Um, let me go and actually put the screen well not even a screenshot just bring up the version of mac os i think this is 10 yeah 10 13 6 so high sierra uh it's a little mac mini so there isn't anything spectacularly special about this machine it's essentially a bottom of the barrel spec uh mac mini and it should have dumped it ah here we go right so right next to my uh, vast you can see here if I click on it it'll bring it up unknown online so it's stopped because there's nothing to sync and if I go to open I must uh, I want to believe this op actually opens up the web browser uh, it may actually open up a GUI version but let's see uh, typically when you install sync thing uh, say on Linux or any as if you're not including okay oh it's gonna bring up Safari oh that's good uh, Windows has a GTK. I may actually do a video on that. The installing it is nothing special, but uh, I may actually still do that. But to configure it is a little different depending on where you're at in terms of the uh, operating system. Mac OS will have something particular, which is why I'm showing this one. Windows will have its own particular thing. Then you get into the more esoteric operating systems, FreeBSD, Solaris, um, we can actually go back and see the different operating systems they support. That's the one nice thing about Sync Thing is that, you know, Dragonfly BSD, you know, essentially right here, they have the command line. That's what CLI, command line interface. And the, look at the Linux, it's just different processor architectures, Windows. So you will be able to run it on anything you can think of. And where are we at? Oh, I bet you it is. Uh, nope. Oh, 
All oh, right, what's the uh I'm trying to remember. The hotkeys are. Oh, there we go. Oh, I went too far. Uh, I want to say. Okay. So, no playing with that. Sorry about that. I don't want to give anybody motion sickness or just disorient. We'll do it the easy way. So, 12701.1. Uh, and. The port should be 8384. This is the standard web interface. It essentially runs as a service or as an application uh, background. And then here it'll require a password. Ooh, I think I actually have this installed. You know what? Nope, that's not it. Hmm. It's not blank. Oh. Oh, okay, that did it. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now, as you can see, uh, it's, I have, and now just to verify, let's check the about. It should be 14.49.1. If I... Why is that not filling that out? So it should tell me. That's the one I installed. Let's just go back to double check that. And it shows, yeah, here on the URL, so 1449. And nothing but kiss here. Mm, that's interesting. Let's see what it says. And this is not... Okay. Let's do this. Let's restart it. And let's see what it gives us. Oh, just as a side note, um, I also use this on my Android phone to sync to a machine, which is a Linux machine in the other room, and that actually backs up all my photos there is a nice way um, as I said in, or as I mentioned earlier in the video uh, I may actually go through and do a little more they're not not complicated or advanced setup but essentially a uh, you create a using sync thing on your phone you can have it take photos and push those images out to you um, to another folder on another machine say your desktop laptop wherever you are so that when you log on so when you get onto your Wi-Fi network at home you can then transfer them over and just kind of have that going. And then you can delete the images on your phone, but the machine or the desktop, whatever you have, laptop, will actually not delete the images and it will hold them there. It's essentially what's called a uh, receive only. And, uh, and so that way that you can back up the images. Yeah, I'm going to pause the recording here to see what actually is going on and why this isn't working, but... Uh, and then I'll start it back up.